Hello, my friend. It is the Monday night version called Fireside Chat of my daily video. I'm Pat Sloan, and we are going to talk fun things today. And we're going to kick it off with our topic of the day, which is on the calendar. If you don't have that yet, it's down below in the links. Uh, and the topic of the day is what is your most well-loved quilt? That one that everybody gets. For a lot of people, it's one of their early quilts, one of their first quilts you may have made, uh, something cuddly, it might be a rag quilt. So I wanna see what your favorite, most loved, not favorite, but your most loved quilt. What's the most loved quilt of yours, your family's? Uh, even might be somebody who gave one to you and, and you everything you know like maybe one of your kids or your parents and you go there and it's always the one that's well loved and which means that it's getting sort of faded and the binding might need redone soon <laughs> that one so i'm going to show you mine because i found this a very hard question i have made a lot of quilts and so we rotate them out um you know, so they, I don't have a whole lot of them that get used just exclusively because I use them to decorate. So I change the colors. So there's always different ones, but I have two that are in the bedroom and these are the ones that get the most love at the moment and have for quite a while. And you're going to see, I'm going to show you this first one, which, uh, I did both of these. I did a little while ago, like a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> this first one was even longer ago than a long time ago. Uh, it is a, a sort of a rag quilt. It's called a bullseye. It was first, the pattern first came out from Country Threads, uh, where they just took a shape, and here it was circles, and did them rag quilt style. So the circles are rag quilt style. I'll show you. See, they're edged, so they're just circles layered on top of each other, and then you sew, and you basically built those off the quilt. You can see they're patchworked. You built these squares, and then you cut them in four, and you sew them back together. So, um, you know, there's lots of variations of that now, including flowers, and I did something like that for a magazine a long, long time ago. But this is, they're heavy, just like a rag quilt. They're heavy. This has regular batting, though. It isn't done, it isn't assembled like a rag quilt. Uh, it's just the top is assembled and then it's made like a regular quilt. But what I love is this border, this, this red, that blue, the angels, <laughs> it's like everything about it. This border was designed uh, for fabric line with Jerry Kimmel Carr, who years ago was part of the red wagon or owned the red wagon, uh, design firm. And I loved her style. And when this came out, I just had to have it. And on the black, I have flannel. So there's flannel and it's not a real fuzzy flannel. It's a woven flannel. It's a, more like a brushed cotton, they call it. So this is one of my, one of my most loved quilts and it's holding up pretty well. You know, it's not fading too much. Unlike number two, I'm going to show you. <laughs> this one is, was started out with very soft fabric. It was called Seaside Rose. Uh, and it's very, very pastel, very, very tone on tone. And once again, the seashell fabric and there's some roses like uh, that are just, just gorgeous. So there actually is a design on here, but it's very hard to see because first of all, the fabrics were so pale that they did not have contrast to begin with and they faded a little bit. Now this one I have minky on the back or cuddle they're they're very similar just two different companies and this is a plaid and they're oh so soft if you have never used this for the backing you must do it at least once and you will be hooked i just had one of the pieces that were done by cindy and dennis at the spa they just quilted one with some gray minky on the back and we did a really tight um quilting pattern on it so i'll be showing you that soon this one has a very uh, open open quilting pattern there's no batting in it so it's a little bit lighter than if you put batting in it because the minky or the cuddle has some weight to it so it's a little bit heavier um, so you can see I'll just flip to the front here a second that there is very minimal there's very minimal quilting I outlined the blocks and uh, that that's about it and did like a wave or something in the border or a strip yeah I have I have a couple yeah so I mean just not much at all this guy the binding is probably going to go at some point because it's getting kind of um, the binding is will get frayed 
no matter what you're doing. And so it does get a little bit uh, worn out on your well-loved quilts. So I'm excited to see your well-loved quilt uh, over at my Facebook community, Quilt Along with Pat Sloan. So while we're on quilts, let's look at what's on the wall. Woo this came back, there were three pieces I sent to the spa, the Barbie, my dear Jane, and the, um, what was it, the Jolly Bar Sampler. That's the one that has the cuddle on the back. So I'll be showing you those ones. But here we go. Uh, whoops, get, get, my cord keeps getting caught. So let's come on in. There, there we go. My uh, dear Jane, which I alternated with the alphabet. So I have like the top row is all blocks from the Dear Jane book, which is Jane Stickle. The blocks were all from her Civil War era quilt or so, you know, she made it during the Civil War. It is dated on the front. Uh, so I did X number of blocks, however many are on here. And they weren't really enough to make a decent size wall hanging. So I'd always want to do something with the alphabet. So I alternated the blocks with the alphabet. And then we did a orange peel on there. Now the backing is mostly this batik uh, and then I, it wasn't big enough so I put a little bit of beige on either side just to just to make it big enough and Cindy did a great job uh, centering it. So there it goes. These have signatures including uh, one from my mother-in-law because we did it as a uh, well, a bunch of my friends on, uh, mostly they were local except for my mother-in-law at the time. And, uh, Madge and I had gone to see Brenda Papadakis who wrote the Dear Jane book uh, with permission from the museum, uh, that owns the quilt. So we had gone to see her and taken a workshop and then we did some traded some blocks. Yes, these are five inch blocks and we all were trading them. And so everybody who traded signed it. So next time, or sometime this week, I will put, bring that down and show you up close uh, the blocks and the quilting and all of that. Okay. If you are doing, going on a picnic, getting it wrapped up, there are tons of finishes showing up over on Quilt Along with Pat Sloan, my uh, group at Facebook, just tons of them. They are just so darling. I just love the finishes. We're on finishes today. <laughs> Well, that was it. That was the that one needs binding still, but it's close to finish. I'm trying to debate on the binding. I just love striped bindings, and I know I think I was going to do the charcoal color, but now I'm thinking, oh, what if I can audition? What if I can buy, find a black and cream or like a burgundy and cream? Because I can't do white. That that there's too much gold in that quilt. I mean, there really isn't any white. Um, but I'm thinking I can hunt hunt up a stripe of some sort to do for the binding on that. Otherwise I do the charcoal, which was from my Bonnie Lane and that's what's on that little inner border. So that is, that is the options. So if you haven't finished or going on a picnic, it, wrap it up, wrap it up. Mine got sent to the spa. It arrived over there with some other things. I'm trying to, these tops from 2020. I'm trying to get all the tops from 2020. I'm not there yet. I still have some. I want to get all of them quilted. I don't know why. I just have this goal. It's like for 2020, I don't want any tops left. So I have to go back and look because I still have the rainbow and I still have the spools and um, I probably have whatever our sew along was from earlier in the year. <laughs> I don't think I quilted that one. And I think I will take the, the, the bone ash where I put it, oh, I put it away, but the sprinkle and try it for the spools and then just do some straight line quilting on that. Uh, and same with the rainbow. So they're, they're not super big. So I should be able to handle them, you know, pushing them through because free motion right now, I don't have the grip strength yet to sort of do more than probably 10 minutes and then my hand might ache. So I want to give it more time to heal and more time with the weight training before I do free motion. So everything needs to be just sort of straight line because I can push it through. And if it, if I feel like it might be too much, like if it's a little bulky, I'll put the brace on the left hand and that way it's, it stabilizes the wrist. And that worked really well. Um, okay. All right. Now I want to show you the pillow with the cross stitch again, what I'm thinking about. So 
here we go. I was messing around today and I'm sort of liking this concept. So I'm just gonna hold it up first. So here is what I'm thinking. I took the stripe, remember I showed you the stripe and the purple fabric the other day on the video. So what I'm thinking is I will, I like the stripe like this, where I just wrap the pillow with the stripe horizontal. I love that it's just that horizontal. So what I can do is I can actually applique this center to it. I actually could just like tack it down if I really wanted to at some point, but let's not, let's not get too far ahead here. because I'm gonna show you some concept ideas. So this is sort of the look. I love this look. So let's, let's now come down here on the poofy pillow. Originally I was gonna do this on the little pillow because it's not too big, but then if I did that, um, it wouldn't get very much of the orange. And I thought, well, I just really like that orange. So I've used the Wonder Clips to hold it, the things under because I don't wanna see the white of the purple. I just wanna see how that purple looks. There we go. <clears throat> so this concept's really cool. So what I can do is I can, I can assemble this unit, the center and the purple as its own like little mini quilt. And then I can do one of two things. I could just then applique it to this stripe, which I'll have, I'll quilt the stripe fabric, I'll quilt it straight lines across, just to get that even stronger straight line effect. I'll quilt the front of it, the back will be the um, stripe as well. And then I could applique this to it. And then pretty much it's a finished unit. I would just use it over and over again through the years. I may not even quilt this thing. I may just take this as, its, as itself. Um, but I might just go ahead and do the pellon behind this. This is a pale gray, pale, 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 barely gray, um, eight o'clock. So that's one. The other thing I could do is I can make this detachable. And being that this is a purple, I mean orange stripe rather, I might not need to do that for this one. But if it were detachable, like a base color, like blue and you use a lot of blue in your living room, then you could either do buttons, like you could make buttonholes here and then just put these on with buttons or just Velcro tabs on the back and you could Velcro or you could even do a whole strip set of Velcro if you really wanted to get that locked on there. And then it could be removable. You could take this on and off and replace it and always have something of this size with the Velcro strips or the buttons that you put onto a base pillow. Now, I got to thinking, uh, Priscilla and Chelsea over at the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch do a lot of different finishes. So if you're looking for things that are a little bit more crafty and not sewn into a quilty project, you can look at their stuff. But they do a lot with Rick Rack, and I happen to love Rick Rack. Um, well, they do a lot with ribbon, I'm sorry. I'm not sure how much they do with rickrack, but I have all of this rickrack, and a lot of it's old. Like I've collected, look at this. It's not even nice looking, but I'm sure there's some good stuff under the paper. My mother-in-law, Madge, and I used to go to the, um, you know, yard sales and the antique stores and would buy the rickrack. And then I've bought lots and lots of new rickrack. Here's another old one, 19 cents. And that was in the plastic still. But I'm thinking I have some purple, like here is some purple. This is pretty bright, but it might be kind of cool. I could put the purple between the cross stitch or even just tack it to straight line it right down on the purple here. Um, but it's kind of cute, just peeking out. So I would like sew it underneath as just this little edge. Um, you can't do the baby rickrack that way. Baby rickrack is this size. So you can see how skinny that is. That's just too skinny to, to uh, tuck underneath. It's great like if you're gonna make stems or something like that, just lay it on top. But to tuck underneath, it, you need to have the medium or bigger, like a jumbo. So I don't know if I have other purpley ones in here, but I am thinking that I might play around. I think that might be my only purple at the moment. I have other ribbons and things in here. This is a big um, box, a gift box that would have that came would have had a clothing in it. It was one of those bigger clothing gift boxes from years ago. Okay, so tell me, 
what you think of the rickrack idea and do you collect rickrack is that something you also have it's i just love it it's fun uh it gives that little extra touch so i definitely think i need to have the rickrack on this one under the cross stitch so it's tucked under the cross stitch so only half of it is actually will be showing so that is a project to put over there i can't like timing wise this is bad because i have a project that i have to deliver in a couple, next couple of days and i had to get that done and then after that i will do the pillows but i did do the living room and so we're not doing that right now but i will show you the living room uh so for this year's quilts hanging up, um, which includes the layer cake quilt from the, the birthday one from the layer cake quilt done in the fall, fall Halloween-ish fabrics, that's hanging um, behind my sofa now. So yes, got that put up. So I'll tell you something funny, you know, if you weren't watching, you may have not seen that my coffee pot died, or did I tell you the coffee pot died? Either way, <laughs> the coffee pot died. <laughs> and it was coming yesterday, which was a bit earlier than it said. So I was like, yes, because the one pot one is fine, but I prefer to make, a, a, you know, have it already made in the morning. Uh, and plus then I use it to make my iced coffee. So before I tell you about that, so Alexa tells me um, I have... A message so it was the delivery of your delivery is coming including the coffee pot so it's like yes yeah. so they she knew that I needed the coffee pot more than anything else that was coming including a new curling iron I had that that died uh, everything was dying all the mechanical things <laughs> That's, hopefully nothing else does so I have a new coffee pot yes and it's a basically the same one we had but it's upgraded we buy inexpensive coffee pots and they last three four years and then you just buy a new one uh, which totally works for me because they're only like 20 bucks and so that amount of time for 20 bucks is totally worth it uh, the the last one it didn't have AM and PM on it. We had to actually take a Sharpie and write it on there. You had to like push a light to see it. And it's like, no, I wanna see AM or PM, you know, like you print it on there so that I know I push the buttons right. This upgraded one or new version of it has that. <laughs> it's the small things. It's the little things in life that are, we take great pleasure of, especially right now. <laughs> so speaking of that, our uh, cozy thing, so along, is celebrating things that make us happy, and we're going to go by season. We're going to be talking through all that, and I hope you're doing the list uh, and writing down things. I've got my list open, and as I'm reading the books over again and, and reading a couple that I hadn't read all the way through of the Huga, the Huga books, which is the Danish um, art of the Danish philosophy, really, the Danish lifestyle of feeling. Uh, peaceful, uh, being sure you have time in your life. Uh, it's called Huga, H-Y-G-G-E. Uh, links below to the, the couple books I recommend. But I want to ask you what you've, uh, if you've, if you're doing your list of things that you want to incorporate, do it by season or do it overall. Here's a couple things that I have been incorporating. One is to open the door. Even though it's a little bit chilly, my, my room has a sliding glass door which goes out this is the family room of the house that's how it was built for and so it goes out to the deck and i've been opening the slider even if it's a little bit chilly so i can listen to the birds um and hear my neighbor's barking dog sometimes and we close it again <laughs> but it's just been peaceful to hear that and that's one of the things that makes me feel cozy makes me feel good um, i realized that even though I wasn't doing a ton of cooking in the past few years, not like a lot of major cooking, um, that I missed it because I used to do, uh, really enjoy doing a lot of different recipes. I have a whole group called Kitchen Adventures on Facebook that we share recipes, share what we're making, share what we think we wanna make, um, successes, failures, it's so much fun. And so the, the um, Saturday I made pasta sauce and it was just so nice because my hands are working well enough now I feel comfortable with a sharp knife <laughs> that I can stabilize my hands don't you know give out or grit or anything like that anymore they're really working much much better 
And so I made the pasta sauce and it was just, I started thinking this is um, wonderful. I just feel so good taking my time. I'm not in a hurry. There's not anything I had to rush to do. And that's what we're trying to bring into our lives over doing cozy things so long and just just using that. So what I want to do is use the so long to jumpstart jump start you, jump start myself into doing all these things. Now, I, I really like yoga as well. I started doing that in January, only in January. Cindy, who, Cindy of Cindy and Dennis of the spa, <laughs> the Pink Paw Studio, uh, Cindy got me into it uh, with Yoga with Adrian. And, you know, I don't, can't do weight bearing now. So that means as of June, that all stopped. But I have started doing it a few times, just testing out where I can lean on my arms. But mostly I can do the breathing, I can listen, because I can tell you when I broke my wrist, the day I broke my wrist, uh, the breathing that I learned in the yoga is what kept me from going like off the, off the edge. Because, you know, I had to have a bone pop back into my wrist on that night. And, you know, they just did that while I sat there. There wasn't any anesthesia or anything, you know, nothing. You just, okay, hold on, grit your teeth. We're going to just pop it back in. And it was like, breathe, breathe, breathe. And I used the breathing that I learned in the yoga. And I did that before I went into surgery. And I've done it when I felt stressed about things here. So I need to bring back even if it's just listening and doing the peaceful, calming parts of it, not where I can't, you know, push or do all the maneuvers. So that's the other thing I'm looking at doing. So if you do yoga, you know, if you've done yoga with Adrian, um, I'll link her below. But let me know in the comments because uh, I'd love to hear if there's uh, what you all are doing. Now, I had a cute, cute, cute gift I have to show you. It's just too darling. This was the card that came from Marla. So Marla, you know how this is the year of the rainbow. Holy cow, right? We did the rainbow. Um, Andre Tute Bene from, uh, for Orophil, um, you know, to let everybody know it's going to be all right someday. <laughs> so we did the rainbow and she sent me these crocheted things. <sighs> these are so cute. <laughs> Look, <laughs> they're candy corn. They're candy corns. Look at them. Look at them. How cute are they? And then she did chocolate, the chocolate ones, which I've always known them as Indian corn, um, you know, with the, the darker base, the chocolate base. And then she also did some cute little coasters and some scrubbies for me. And, uh, and she said to give some to Anne who helped make all the blocks for going on a picnic. So I sent Anne a picture and she was like, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, Marla. So Marla, this is wonderful. Mwah. Thank you so much for thinking of me. Uh, it's so nice. Um, now, this is Monday night. Remember, I have a video every morning that comes out. And if you like to do the live chat like we're doing here, uh, you can come along. Uh, and do that in the morning. I also added during the live chat part, which of course I should have said in the beginning, but I'm going to try to remember to say it next time. <laughs> I just said it. I just thought of it. There's a, f a feature called Super Chat, which during a live chat session, you can purchase emojis. And uh, if you want to donate to the videos, donate to um, basically to me so that I can run these things for free. Uh, that is what the super chat function is. It's a little dollar sign that's down there by the um, emoji thing on the live chat for YouTube. And of course we put it in and I've forgotten to talk about it ever since. So <laughs> I'll try to remember next time. It's probably most fun on Monday night because it's just for this session. Uh, you know, so since this one's, a, a, we're on here a little bit longer, particularly if you come on and join right when it starts. All right, my friend. I'm so glad you're here. I love you. Mwah. See you online.